Good afternoon. I'm going to talk to you about um, the MSC in International Health and Tropical Medicine, which is now currently have started their ninth cohort. So we do have a vision and a mission with IHTM, and it is about developing leaders in global health spaces. And it's about building this network of community and a community of people who work together to affect positive change in global health. We do this through a, a very broad network of teachers and people who are very integrally involved, in addition to the just the one people who come and give a lecture here and there, there's a number of people who lead the modules and that represents diversity as well. We draw our teachers across the Oxford Tropical Network. So we do draw teachers that come to the course to do teaching from our various units overseas. Um, and we also have placements of our students that go overseas in their third term, which I'll come on to. We have the privilege as well, being embedded within Oxford, that we can draw on teachers across the various departments within the university. Our course is very um, multidisciplinary, so we do take advantage of where we're embedded in the heart of Oxford. The nuts and bolts of it, so we have three core modules, which is the paradigms and tools in global health, and this includes the epidemiology, the statistics, the social science paradigms and tools, which is the qualitative and mixed methods. Um, we have health economics, and we very recently included health finance and health management, um, given the needs and interest of our students. The challenges and change in international health covers some diseases, but our focus isn't so much about let me teach you all that there is to know about um, international health. It's more about problem solving. It's more about these meta skills that are relevant and important for the future global health leaders. And an example of this, during the COVID, um, when COVID struck, we had just finished our second term and students were in the classroom and then lockdown happened after that. Well, our third term, we tend to send our students abroad. Um, but we gave them the choice that year to say, okay, well, if you feel you need to and want to contribute to your own country or in some way to the COVID effort, then you can change your placement and do a pivot and work on COVID issues. And we were delighted to see quite a number of our students took up that offer and contributed to generating the kind of evidence that informed policies within their home context, but elsewhere as well. So that's just an example of we can't possibly cover all the diseases that are gonna be relevant. But the important thing is the skills that we give and the foundations that we provide are transferable, such that whatever types of challenges are going to emerge in the future, our students will have the tools to be able to adapt and apply them and be those leaders in the global health spaces. Global Health and Research and Practice, the other module, involves um, what we consider very core and important elements that don't fit into other aspects of, of the core modules that I've discussed so far. It's not a methodology as such, it's not diseases as such, but it involves things like ethics and governance, which CSER leads on. It involves health systems and policy research, which SASE leads on. So these are components that we think are quite um, essential to understanding how global health issues manifest in resource limited contexts and what solutions are viable and sustainable with limited resources. We, in addition to the hard skills that we provide, throughout the year we provide a set of soft skills through the leadership management and communication training. And these soft skills um, really uh, pertain to, it's not enough to just generate evidence. It's not enough to just critically engage with that evidence. It's what you do with that evidence that makes a difference. How do you communicate that evidence where it matters and to who it matters in order to be able to affect positive change? So this communication element, communication with different people, communication in different contexts um, and with different topics is very important to, to what we do in generating and supporting the, the development of future global health leaders. In the second term, we have a set of six options that our students will choose from. And they're, um, they 
are required to do two, but many want to do more than two. As you can see, it's quite enticing to want to take as much as you can. Um, so they sometimes take three, very few to go on and take four. It's about time management issues. But as you can see, we have a very nice range of modules from vaccinology that's led by Adrian Hill and Andy Pollard um, to international development and health. We also have collaborative collaborations with the School of Geography and Environment and offering a joint module that's shared with their master's students on development, environment and health. And we're always on the lookout of evolving the content of our course, as well as the ways in which we deliver the content. Just a little bit more on the leadership management and communication training. Um, we know that leadership means different things to different people. And what we are always trying to evolve is saying, what is most relevant to where our students are coming from? And our students come having had working experience. So that's one of the prerequisites to coming on the course is you have to have at least one year. And most of our students have more than one year of experience working in the global health space. Now they can be, um, different backgrounds. They can be anthropologists, they can be uh, urban planners, they can be um, clinical doctors. So we have a very nice diversity of backgrounds of our colleagues who do come on the course, but they all come with that rich experience and we do a lot of peer learning in the classroom. The kind of skills that we do provide them include academic writing. A lot of our students have been um, out um, working and a lot of them come from backgrounds that academic writing hasn't been something that was central and dominant in, in the work that they've been required to do. So that's something that we develop and bespoke and put a lot of time and effort into ensuring that there is a confidence that's built around academic writing. We have um, this year going to be introducing critical thinking and practical reasoning. Again, thanks to Caesar, we always have both our alumni and our staff introduce really interesting new elements to the course that we embrace. So the critical thinking and practical reasoning is more getting, getting our students to, as part of that leadership element, is not just take evidence at face value, but how do you engage with that evidence? And how do you reason through logical arguments and be persuasive, which links then to the debate training. So we have um, our alumni who are Oxford Union debaters train our students around debate training skills, and then they go to the Houses of Parliament, uh, sorry, to the um, Oxford Union and present a public debate. We have um, a negotiation training, stakeholder management. We have media training. So after they go on their third term placement, they come back and they have a BBC crew who films them and then feeds back to them on how they can effectively communicate with public audiences through the media. We've introduced this year storytelling as a way of being able to tell those stories that they have ex experience with and, and want to communicate in a very effective and compelling manner. And we do take them to the Houses of Parliament. So we have a relationship with colleagues at the Houses of Parliament where they give us um, very relevant and timely briefs that they want answers to, that they're currently debating. We give those topics to our students. They present policy briefs. We work with them, give them feedback on it, and then they get an opportunity to go to the Houses of Parliament to present those briefs. And this is part of the communicating with a policy audience, part of our leadership training. The research the placement happens in their third term. So our students have two months where we send them abroad and we send them to be um, placed with, and it's, and it's particularly um, uh, a mutually beneficial arrangement where we have hosts across the tropical network, but as well increasingly amongst our alumni who offer projects to our students where they can benefit of having a clever student um, working with them, but also then they can benefit the student for providing the support and development that our students need to apply the skills that they have learned in the first two terms. Now, we really like to diversify, so we don't want our students to go back to their own countries, but rather we send our African students to Asia, we send our Asian students to Africa, and increasingly now we're linking in Latin America as well as a part of our placement portfolio. 
And the topics change every year, as you would imagine, because the kind of interests and research is changing year by year, as well as the profile of our students. This is just giving you a shot and you can barely read it, but you can see the backgrounds and the countries that our students come from. This is the, the graduation, the ones that just finished this past year. And Samuel is on here, he's one of them. And then we have our incoming cohort who is just finishing their induction this week. And we have the largest cohort yet. So typically we aim for 25, but this year we're lucky to have 29 students from 22 different countries. Yeah. And Sam Bill is one of them, so you can wait for So I just wanted to point out some of the statistics. So over the nine years, we have 203 students. So it includes this cohort from across 62 different countries. So that's the breadth of our network. And if you look just a little bit at the breakdown of our statistics, it is quite unusual for Oxford and an Oxford master's course, where you can see that a large majority of our students and graduates come from lower middle income and low income backgrounds and countries. If you look at it regionally, we're obviously doing better across Africa and that pertains to funding. So where the scholarships are for. Um, we do well in Asia as well, but we're not doing as well in Latin America or some of the other, other regions yet. But that's, that's a part of having to find scholarships. And again, on our course, the large majority of our students are on full scholarships. And that's why we can get the diversity that we do have on the course. I just wanted to just um, profile a little bit and you'll get more sense of this if I, if I ask you to please visit our website. So if you just Google IHTM, um, you'll come across our website. In terms of where our alumni are ending up, um, now, we're a relatively young course from Oxford standards, but we uh, have alumni already in ministers of health in international organizations such as the WHO, PAHO, FAO, um, the World Food Program, the World Bank, UNDP, UNSF, MSF, and it's, and it's growing. So they are um, achieving those leadership potentials and on their way, depending on what how you define leadership. We also have alumni in research institutions. And as I pointed out, a number of them do come back at some point to do a DPhil. We have over the nine years, about a third of them that end up coming back to do DPhil studies or doctoral further research. Very few go immediately after because it's such an intensive year that we have for them, but also because they want to go back, apply their skills and find where they can provide most um, relevance to the work that they're doing. I'm, I'm going to just flash some quotes and some places where our alumni have won. So you can see some quotes uh, um, from our various cohorts over the years and where they've ended up. I won't read them to you for the interest of time. And you can find more of them on our website. But I'll leave this up and just to say that we're immensely proud of the impact that our students have, how they pay forward with the opportunities that they have had in the year that they have come to Oxford. And they are having a ripple effect. They're, it's it's really heartwarming and uh, humbling to see the kinds of things that they go on to do and uh, the achievements that they have made, but more importantly, the lives that they have impacted and will be impacting. We have won a lot of awards um, and we're very proud of that because they're student-led awards. So it's not, it doesn't have any of the politics of institutions and who gets nominated for what. A lot of these awards come from the student union. So they're student-led and, and student-determined awards. And we're immensely proud of that. And it's, um, and it's a testimony to our wonderful staff and dedicated staff. So that's it for me. We're supporting the future change makers in global health. So thank you very much. <laughs>